Hello, Abbey Woodworkers and DIYers. Mayanna here with Heartwood Art, and today we're going to talk about the bill of this shop stool. It's so easy, fast, cheap, and fun. Hey, if you're enjoying these tips, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and look below this video for the materials, list, tools, and everything you'll need to build this stool. Okay, let's dive in. Okay, let's start with the seat. Lay out your 1x4s side by side, but one side of the ends against another board to keep them square, and then take your final measurements. Mine was 16 and a half inches by 13 and 3 quarter inches. Next, measure your rails. Lay two of your 13 and a half 2x2s down the sides, top to bottom on left and right. Then measure the distance between them. It should be 10 and a half inches, but if not, adjust the cut on the stretcher 2x2s as needed. And then lay the stretcher 2x2s to that length and lay them side to side at the top and bottom. Leave room for the 2x2 legs. And remember that 2x2s are actually 1.5 inches by 1.5 inches. Now that you know everything is correctly measured and cut, you're ready to make your pocket holes. If the 2x2s have an ugly side, use that and make one pocket hole in the center of the width on each end. Now note, you can use two pocket holes by using the B and C holes on a K4 jig to help ensure the rails don't spin. But considering how cracked and such 2x2s can be, you can get away with using just one pocket hole in the center of the wood. I centered mine in the B hole of the Craig jig. Set your jig and bit to the one and one half inch mark and use two and one half inch screws. And you can see my post on the Craig jig K3 and K4 how to cheat sheet and tips for more. Okay, let's build one of the legs. Lay two of your two by two legs down and put the top rail between them. Measure down 14 inches and place the top of the bottom rail between the legs. Now, I tried the Craig right angle clamp on one side, but I found it got in the way of my drill while trying to insert the screw on the opposite side. So, I went with two long clamps at each rail. That didn't work either. So, I had to turn the pocket holes up, which will end up facing the inside of the stool. Now, you may also want to clamp the rail to the edge of your bench for the first screw to ensure the 2x2 two two doesn't spin on you. Once you have the top rail in place, re-measure that middle rail to ensure it's even on both sides. Then clamp and screw. I flipped the legs and the clamp so I could use another clamp to hold to the bench for that first screw. Okay, let's attach front and back rails. Next, you might want to stand your legs on end on the back of the seat so you can see the orientation of where the pocket holes will go on your front and back rails. I found the best way to put in that first screw is to take those two pieces and lay them out so that the rail is flat on the bench and clamped to it and the leg is standing straight up and also clamped. And then repeat for the other leg. Now your frame should be sturdy enough to sit on lightly and decide where you want your other two rails. Mine ended up being so that the top of the new rails would be at the bottom of the existing rails. So that made it super easy to mark too. And just like the other rails, you'll need to turn these toward the inside of the stool so you can get the screws in. Now it's time for mounting the frame to the seat. Line your seat boards back up and place the frame on it. Check to ensure everything lines up and then clamp it down. I pulled the stool to the corner of my bench and clapped on two sides to ensure everything stayed aligned. You could just go straight down into the frame with wood screws and it would hold. A few number eight by one and three quarter construction screws with a star driver work perfectly for me. I pre-drilled and screwed to attach the frame to the seat. And then I used at least two screws per rail. Now be careful not to hit your pocket hole screws. And be sure to pre-drill these holes first. And you can countersink if you like too, but they will be on the bottom and no one will see, so flush is fine. Now, even though I pre-drilled, I also used my drill instead of my impact driver to drive the screws to ensure there was no chance 
of splitting that wood. And this is an optional step to strengthen the seat if you like. So if you want to ensure all four seat boards stay tightly together, place those two optional 1x4 pieces across them. And you can either pre-drill and use short wood screws, or you can use a brad nailer to attach them to the seat boards, which is what I did. I used one inch brad nails as one and a quarter inch might actually poke through if driven in too far. And then sand the whole thing if you like. Now some of the two by twos I had were pretty rough and I wanted to ensure I didn't get splinters from them. The one by fours were already pretty smooth, but I put a light sand on them anyway, especially those end grains, so I wouldn't get any splinters while grabbing the stool too. Then finish as desired. I left mine all natural as it's a shop stool and it really doesn't need to be fancy. See, I told you it was easy and fun. But be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and come on over to heartwoodart.com and visit me for more shop tools and tips. And I'll see you in the shop.